So for the prop installation, always remember that the Airmaster installation manual is your primary source of uh, information here. And this video is just for visual references to uh, double check the manual. Um, the first step you're gonna do here is remove this uh, plastic cover from your prop flange on your engine. Um, be careful when you do this, uh, oil will spill out. Um, and the reason that that's the first step is because the next step is we're gonna clean off the prop flange. The Airmaster manual says that friction um, between the prop and the uh, flange here helps actually hold it into position. So we've got it all cleaned up. And then the next step is going to be to take your bolts that come with the, uh, the prop and make sure that the Nordlock is oriented correctly as uh, the prop manual shows. Then you'll take your drive lug and actually slide it over the bolt. This is the only way to get them all onto the, the engine. Then you'll take the copper slip and apply it to the barrel of the drive lug. And um, we'll just put a layer on it and kind of wipe it around and make sure it's even on there. And then we'll insert it into the prop flange, just like that. So we're gonna do this for all of the bolts and then I'll show what the next step is after that. <clears throat> the next step is once you've got all of these um, drive lugs and bolts into position here, um, <clears throat> and something I didn't mention in the, the previous clip is the copper slip is installed on the drive lugs. It's the anti-seize compound so that over time these drive lugs aren't stuck in your prop flange uh, permanently. So the next step is going to be to ins install this uh, drive lug pull through tool and it comes with the prop as well. Uh, you place this on first, then these spacers, then these guys, and then you'll use a washer and a nut. We're then going to tighten this with a wrench and you can see that, um, let's get a better angle. You can see even just tightening by hand will pull that drive lug through slowly. So um, it doesn't take a whole lot of pressure to pull this bolt through, um, but this is by far the best and easiest way that I've found to do this. So we'll get all these pulled through now and uh, move to the next step. Something else I wanted to mention here is when you're tightening these through, the, way, the best way to do this is to turn only the nut. Uh, you don't need to turn the bolt in there. And you'll find that just gently tightening it will pull it through and then you'll hit a stop. And that's because your AN bolt has run out of threads. So as long as you're being careful and slow, it's not gonna damage the bolt just to gently hit the end of the threads there and then add two more washers. Reinsert the nut and you can complete the uh, pull through the lug. And there it is. So it's that simple. It doesn't really take any force at all if it's requiring a whole lot of force from the wrench. Uh, there's a problem. So, now that we've got that installed, uh, the next step is going to be to make sure we didn't get any of the copper slip on this prop flange here for the same reason we cleaned it previously. And um, as long as you don't, uh, you know, really slop up the copper slip onto there, there really shouldn't be any reason that there would be uh, any squeeze out onto the flange. So, we're now ready to uh, mount the hub. To install your prop hub, the uh, first step is to remove all of these components from your box. Uh, as you can see, I've already gotten the, um, the uh, hub itself removed from the packaging and the spinner has been removed. Uh, I like to take that off as soon as possible and store the bolts and the spinner in a safe place so that the spinner doesn't get scratched if you're going to leave the nice chrome finish. Um, and not paint it. So uh, for this next step, you'll need the three countersunk bolts that come with the uh, prop kit. And um, also 
at this stage, it's a good idea to check that these uh, uh, sections of tape are covering your prop hub thoroughly still. A lot of times in shipping, they'll get uh, slightly pushed in or it's possible that Customs is going through and checking it or whatever the case may be. So if they are, so on this particular hub, as you can see, they're nice and sealed still, but if they are um, removed or falling off, you'll want to replace them with some fresh tape because it's really important that we don't get dust in there. Um, the hub is full of grease right now and it'll attract dust like crazy and you don't want that. So, all right, so our first step is going to be to install the um, slip ring to uh, the, the electric hub unit here. And that's fairly straightforward. And then uh, I'll show you what that looks like. So here's what the slip ring assembly looks like um, put together here. Um, <clears throat> your three countersunk bolts uh, holding them together. And um, when you align them, you'll want to make sure that the red wire goes to the red dot, black to the black dot, and green to the green dot, as you can see here. Uh, you'll remove each one of these nylock nuts and the washer and put the, the um, the wire, then the washer, then the nut on all three of these. Be careful not to over tighten them as you can potentially damage your slip ring here. So um, also throughout this process, of course, you'll want to work on a soft table surface like this um, just to make sure we don't damage the slip ring or um, any of the components. So our next step is going to be to connect the wires, the three wires here to the three wires on our hub assembly. Uh, we'll be careful here. Um, they sometimes will want to, as you're inserting uh, or connecting the two pieces here, uh, sometimes the wire, wires will want to pinch on the outside like this. So we'll just make sure that they nest nicely into their, um, their recesses here and be careful not to pinch them together here. Um, of course, we'll remove this. In addition to that, uh, you'll notice that there's likely a bolt somewhere around your um, spinner flange here. And that bolt and washer are actually uh, a balance. So you'll want to make sure to leave those. Uh, it comes balanced from Airmaster. So you want to make sure to leave those in place. Um, they are there for a reason as much as it looks like they're not doing anything. So. Let's get these two parts put together so that we can put them on the plane. Okay, so here you can see the um, basically completed uh, prop hub and spinner flange assembly here. Um, there is nothing that bolts these two components together. So as you can see, there's um, play there. Um, but there is a positive mating between the two components so that we know there's no uh, wire interference. So the next step is going to be to make sure that, as I mentioned earlier, the uh, the engine's uh, prop flange is clean and this surface here is clean as well uh, so that we can mate them together. And uh, basically once we put this assembly onto the plane, the bolts go through and that's what holds all of these components together. So um, until then, there's going to be a little bit of play there, so just be careful as we move it onto the engine. So here you can see the uh, prop hub just uh, finger tightened onto the uh, prop flange on the engine here. Um, so we're going to just gently tighten until snug each of the bolts uh, working in a star pattern like you would tighten the, uh, the wheel nuts on a car. Um, and then once that's done, we will torque each bolt to 24 Newton meters because these are AN5 bolts as uh, specified in the Airmaster installation manual. So let's get that done now. A tip for this step is if you only have regular torque wrenches like I do, uh, you'll probably need to use a crow's foot like this. Um, that just allows you to actually be able to access it with a socket. As you can see, some of these bolts are, you know, mostly inaccessible here. So if you do need to use a crow's foot, make sure that it's at a right angle from your torque wrench, as you can see here. Uh, if you have it rotated so that it's straight out uh, like this, you're actually effectively increasing the length of the arm for your torque wrench. And so you're going to over torque your bolt just slightly like that. Or, of 
course, this would be over torqued, that would be under torqued. So just keep that in mind, a uh, right angle is going to keep that moment arm the same on your torque wrench and so your adjustment will be correct. So the next step that we're going to do here is install our brushes and so you'll want to be careful here. Um, the way I prefer to do it, there's two ways. One is you can use a piece of paper or a card, compress these and slide it into position. Or what I do is just place it right here and then push in and then insert the bolts. So we'll get that done now. Those are torqued to the same 24 Newton meters. And uh, this part of the process will be complete. All right, so now we've got everything torqued and we've installed a, or applied torque seal to each one of the bolts to make sure that uh, it's identifiable if it does come a little bit loose. Um, in addition to that, you can see that we've got the extension uh, wire loom uh, connected to our uh, brushes. And so this part of the process is now complete and your prop hub is installed.